my hurricane forecast today i'm going to be talking about the 2021 atlantic hurricane season now I'm going, in this video i'm going to be talking about la nina and i'm also going to be talking about the increase that we could possibly see in tropical activity now as you can see here on this picture you can see it marks hurricane season and it has up two red flags we all know all of us that are currently watching this video all know that those two red flags does not mean anything good and that little sign that shapes like an S, especially that does not mean anything good. Now, let's get in depth with La Nina. La Nina, the effects that we see from La Nina in the Atlantic is going to be the higher water temperatures and the, more, the less vertical wind shear. And the effects, if you live in the Pacific, Eastern Pacific, you're going to see um more an increase in vertical wind shear and the uh, lower lower of water temperatures which means that water temperatures are probably going to be below average so we're probably going to see a return in la nina hence why they're pro predicting an active hurricane season and an above normal hurricane season so the first thing that t that i think about when i when we talk about a la nina is and more active hurricane season because as we all know more the more weather we would see la nina the stronger hurricanes we would see in the atlantic side so with a la nina it's not anything good for the atlantic side but rather for the eastern pacific it's going to be good it's just going to be the opposite of what's happening in the atlantic which is going to be bad in the Atlantic so now I'm going to be talking about wind shear now as I said wind shear the stronger the wind shear it is it hampers tropical development which means that it does it prevents storms to de from developing and the weaker the wind shear the, mo the more it would allow storms to develop so if we have strong wind shear and less wind shear in the eastern pacific let's just say currently there is less wind shear in the eastern pacific because we're seeing this storm forming in the eastern pacific so on the atlantic side there is wind shear but this is not going to last for long because as i said in my previous forecast this break that we're currently seeing is not going to last for long so that means that we're probably going to be seeing a return in la nina which means that so more wind shear would be piled up in the um, Eastern Pacific side and the less wind shear would be in the Atlantic side, which means that with the less wind shear, there's going to be more tropical development and that would allow storms to develop further. So we have to think about, when we think about La Nina, we have to think about the stronger hurricane season for the Atlantic. So now we're going to be talking about um we're going to be talking about the amount of saharan dust as we all know dry air so now dry, dry air usually hampers tropical development as we all know and prevents storms from developing and intensifying so with the combination of wind shear and dry air that would prevent storms from developing because of the dry air just keep, does not keep the air moist at all and that hampers the tropical development and the wind shear shears apart the, the storm and hampers the center of circulation, which prevents it from further intensification. So if we have so if we have a lot of dry air and a lot of um wind shear, then that would prevent storms from developing in the Atlantic. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about dry air and wind shear. So the reason why they're predicting an above normal hurricane season is going to be because they're expecting a return in La Nina and they're actually water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea and throughout the Atlantic is warm and wet. The less, in, less wind shear and no saharan dust and more moisture in the atmosphere, 
that would get these storms going and that would um allow intensification with these storms which means that when all of those good things with the hurricanes combine together that would produce a more favorable atmosphere for these storms to form so when we talk about all of this another thing that comes in mind is preparation preparation is key to all of this so i would like to say if you live in an area that you would normally see landfalls from hurricanes you would like to be prepared because you know that you're prone to landfall so why would not why wouldn't be prepared you should always be prepared at all times so with preparedness comes evacuation so if a storm's threatening your area one thing that you would like to do if it's a major hurricane move out of that area if the the officials tell you to because i would consider you all move out of the area if the officials tell you to because they will have their own reason why they want you to move out of that area and they will know that reason like for example if you live in an area that's prone to flooding storm surge and major damages so they will tell you to evacuate because it would be life threatening and it could threaten your life so they will not just if if um issue an evacuation order out of the blues without any any warning so they will have a reason to issue an evacuation order and i'm sure that reason is going to be very valid so guys be prepared once again and thank you for watching this forecast i'm going to be running the forecast models the gfs model tomorrow and thank you for watching this forecast i'm going to be issuing one forecast um tomorrow morning and thank you for watching